The chocolate bar was never supposed to exist. In 1828, a Dutch chemist invented a machine to make better hot cocoa. It worked perfectly, but created a problem. Leftover fat nobody wanted. For nearly two decades, chocolate makers tried to figure out what to do with this waste product. Then someone realized they could turn the trash into a completely new food. The waste became more valuable than the original product. For 3,000 years, humans consumed chocolate as a drink. The Mayans drank it. The Aztecs drank it. European aristocrats drank it. Nobody ate solid chocolate because it didn't exist in a form worth eating. Raw cocoa is about half fat by weight, which made drinking chocolate thick, greasy, and heavy. Van Houten, a Dutch chemist, wanted to fix this. In 1828, he patented a hydraulic press that could squeeze cocoa beans with enormous force. The pressure separated fat from solids. Out came two products, a dry cake that could be ground into smooth cocoa powder and pure cocoa butter. Van Houten's goal was the powder. He wanted lighter, less greasy drinking chocolate. The cocoa butter was just a byproduct. At first, nobody knew what to do with all this leftover fat piling up in warehouses across Europe. It seemed like expensive waste. Cocoa butter has unusual properties nobody appreciated until much later. It melts at almost exactly human body temperature, around 34 degrees Celsius. Below that, it's solid and snaps cleanly. Above it, it turns liquid and smooth. This is why chocolate melts in your mouth, but not in your hand on a cool day. Cocoa butter also contracts slightly when it solidifies, releasing easily from molds. And it can be tempered, heated and cooled precisely, to form stable crystals that give chocolate its glossy shine and satisfying snap. None of these properties matter for drinking chocolate, but they're essential for making solid chocolate that looks good and doesn't crumble. The waste from Van Houten's press contained exactly what was needed to make chocolate edible. That someone was Joseph Fry in Bristol, England. In 1847, nearly 20 years after Van Houten's invention, Fry discovered something unexpected. If you took cocoa powder, added sugar, and mixed the cocoa butter back in, you got a thick paste. Pour that paste into a mold, let it cool, and you had solid chocolate you could eat. Fry marketed it as delicious chocolate for eating, the first product designed to be eaten rather than drunk. For the first time in 3,000 years, you didn't need hot water. You could unwrap it and bite into it. The invention required thinking about waste differently. The byproduct wasn't trash to dispose of. It was an ingredient to recombine. The fat Van Houten removed to improve hot cocoa was exactly what made eating chocolate possible. But here's where the story flips. Within decades, the economics reversed completely. Hot cocoa had been the valuable product and cocoa butter the waste. Now, solid chocolate became the valuable product, and cocoa powder became the cheap commodity. Chocolate bars could be sold at premium prices. They were portable, required no preparation, and felt like luxury. Cocoa powder was relegated to baking and inexpensive drink mixes. The same machine invented to make better drinking chocolate had accidentally created its replacement. By 1900, Global demand for cocoa butter exceeded demand for cocoa powder. Chocolate makers, who once paid to dispose of the fat, now competed to acquire it. The waste had become worth more than the original product. The Swiss transformed Fry's invention into the chocolate we know today. In 1875, Daniel Peter figured out how to add milk, creating milk chocolate. The process took years because water in milk doesn't mix with cocoa butter. Peter succeeded using condensed milk invented by the Nestle founder, his neighbor. 
Four years later, Lindt invented conching, heating and stirring chocolate for hours to make it impossibly smooth. Here's the diplomatic reality. The British invented the chocolate bar, but the Swiss perfected it. Each innovation built on Van Houten's leftover cocoa butter. Without the waste product from a machine designed to improve hot cocoa, none of these developments would have been possible. The modern chocolate industry exists because someone found a use for industrial trash. What most people miss is that this pattern keeps repeating throughout chocolate history. White chocolate was invented in the 1930s as yet another way to use excess cocoa butter. It contains no cocoa solids at all, just the fat, sugar, and milk. For decades, chocolate purists refused to call it real chocolate. Ruby chocolate, launched in 2017, uses beans processed differently to create a pink color and fruity taste. Both products exist partly because chocolate production generates more cocoa butter than the market naturally needs. When you have valuable waste, you invent new products to use it. The industry has spent nearly two centuries finding creative uses for the byproduct of Van Houten's 1828 invention. Van Houten never intended to revolutionize how humans consume chocolate. He simply wanted better hot cocoa. His hydraulic press was supposed to remove an unwanted ingredient. Instead, it separated chocolate into components that could be recombined in entirely new ways. The bar, the truffle, the bonbon, the coating on your favorite ice cream all exist because of leftover fat from a machine built to make drinking chocolate lighter. The lesson isn't just about chocolate, it's about seeing waste differently. The most transformative innovations sometimes come from asking a simple question. What else can be done with what's left over? Next time you unwrap a chocolate bar, you're holding the solution to a 200-year-old waste problem. Van Houten wanted powder. Fry saw potential in the fat nobody wanted. The Swiss refined it into an art form. Three generations of innovation, all built on industrial leftovers. The chocolate bar was never the goal. It was the answer to a question nobody was asking. What do we do with all this extra cocoa butter? Turns out, you build a global industry. So what's sitting in your pantry that started as someone else's waste?